Un placer It's saludarles pleasure desde Caracas, you Caracas, Venezuela, para el análisis for the, for the en jugada crítica. Aunque el Brexit Although ya es una realidad, el abandono de la Unión Europea por parte del Reino Unido UK, se realiza de manera EU. gradual. This, uh, un proceso que el gobierno gradual, británico aspira a se desarrolle de manera ordenada. Sin embargo, However, se aprecia ya la incertidumbre, eh, por ejemplo, de los efectos que pueda tener este divorcio en viejos conflictos de la Gran Bretaña. En Irlanda Ireland, del Norte reina la frustración y en Gibraltar la incertidumbre. Mientras Escocia vuelve a hablar de independencia, ¿cuáles son los retos más urgentes tras el Brexit en los territorios que eh, forman parte de la, eh, del Reino Unido y que reclaman soberanía? Escocia y Gibraltar son dos territorios estratégicos para el Reino Unido. El primero le da poder económico y financiero en todo el continente a través de la extracción de petróleo. El segundo constituye una zona de importancia geoestratégica por su ubicación en la puerta de África y que le permite controlar el acceso al Mediterráneo. El Reino Unido no se permitiría perder estos United dos enclaves, pero si bien el voto por la independencia dentro, por la permanencia dentro de Gran Bretaña venció en el referendo escocés de 2014, the, la salida de la Unión Scotland, Europea cambió las cosas y hoy se the, vuelve a hablar the change, de independencia. Por su parte, has the whole panorama. On their también side, vuelve a estar en la mira uh, y España reclama la soberanía sobre este enclave Speaking británico. Nuestra tarea es persuadir a la mayoría de las personas en Escocia para que elijan la independencia. Quiero centrarme hoy en el trabajo que debemos hacer para persuadir a esa mayoría de que la independencia es la mejor opción. En el proceso de hacerlo, que aseguremos el derecho a elegirlo en un referéndum. El Brexit ha puesto a Escocia en el camino equivocado y cuanto más avancemos en ese camino, más tiempo tomará y más difícil será volver a tomar el correcto. Necesitamos volver al camino correcto lo antes posible. Y hemos informado al Parlamento and we have informed the Scottish Parliament of this possible referendum since the end of last year. We have asked the Commission, or the Electoral Commission, to pose the question once again. Should Scotland be an independent country? Si piensas en dónde estábamos en nuestra relación con España hace 100 años, quizás estábamos en un lugar mejor de lo que estamos hoy. Eso como resultado de la Segunda Guerra Mundial, del surgimiento de Franco como un dictador a largo plazo, de las restricciones aplican en la frontera y el reclamo de que Gibraltar sea español realmente vuelve a estar en primer plano. Ahora España madura aún más en una democracia europea moderna y debe dejar atrás el concepto de que de alguna manera puede usurpar la soberanía de Gibraltar that they could uh, demand the sovereignty of Gibraltar without the people of, the, of this country be consulted. But let's go exactly where they, these two countries are located and what they represent. Escocia y Scotland Gibraltar, viejos conflictos de Reino Unido. Escocia es una de las Scotland cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar, que es un territorio británico de ultramar. Ambas zonas están separadas por una distancia de más de 3.026 kilómetros. Escocia, ubicada en Europa, cuenta con una superficie de 78.772 kilómetros. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a diferencia de Gibraltar. Escocia es una de las cuatro naciones que constituyen el Reino Unido a
encontró en los sectores de servicios e industria de alta tecnología. Escocia también funge como el sexto centro financiero más importante de Europa. Desde el siglo XX, el independentismo tomó fuerza y el 18 de septiembre de 2014 se reanudó un referéndum, pero ganó la independencia en el 2014. Por su parte, Gibraltar, con una superficie de 7 kilómetros cuadrados, se localiza al sur de la península de Europa y solamente tiene frontera con España. Europa, and it only se has uh, one part of a border. Gibraltar y su estrecho que separa There's a Europa y África comunican al mismo tiempo con el uh, océano Atlántico y el mar Mediterráneo. La corona española se dio la soberanía de Gibraltar a la corona británica en 1714 mediante el Tratado Utrecht. La zona es uno de los puntos de comercio marítimo más transitados del mundo y constituye una puerta al Mediterráneo que conecta al Mediterráneo, un enclave estratégico en el frente comercial y militar en 1967 y un referéndum de pertenencia, el 95% de los gibraltareños expresó sus deseos de mantenerse bajo jurisdicción británica. Ahora, vamos a ver lo que el sitio web digital de los gibraltareños dice sobre este tema importante. Por ejemplo, Sputnik dice que la Unión Europea respaldará a España en los reclamos de Gibraltar y en las negociaciones del Brexit. Esto es lo que this dice what el portal the, es what Pugni, Sputnik de acuerdo says. con un According alto diplomático de la Unión Europea, el gobierno español ha pedido que la nueva relación que se establezca entre el Reino Unido y la Unión Europea no se aplique a Gibraltar sin el consentimiento explícito del país ibérico que solo se dará sin Madrid y Londres llegan a un acuerdo en las conversaciones bilaterales sobre el Peñón. La cuestión de Gibraltar the, uh, pone de relieve las dificultades a las que se enfrenta Londres a medida que avanza en las negociaciones sobre su futura Kingdom relación has, con Bruselas uh, tras el Reino Unido pasó a ser un país ajeno para la Unión Europea después de que se retiró formalmente de la Organización de Estados Unidos de Guardia. Mientras era un miembro de la Unión Europea, el Reino Unido logró resistir los reclamos españoles sobre Gibraltar. Ahora, sin embargo, Madrid contará con el apoyo pleno de los otros 26 países del bloque. Los otros 26 países van a apoyar España. Hay otros portales Now también que titulan sobre este tema, es el caso del público.es eh, que titula el Brexit para el apoyo a la independencia de Escocia a cifras of high, en high numbers. Aquí se dice que tres encuestas públicas la última semana lo confirman la mayoría de los escoceses So last week's numbers, most of the people in Scotland do want the independence from the UK. This was published just hours ago, although the, it was held some days before the Brexit was final. This shows that 52% of the Scottish would vote in favour of abandoning the unit if there is a new, if there's a new referendum on this behalf, and 48% would vote in, in, against. Uh, panel base, who are the one who held this poll, says that there's an increase, a 5% increase, than the numbers in December. For the leader of the Scottish uh, group, this number speaks of a, of a new push for a referendum that he thinks is unstoppable. Scotland says they have been pulled out of the, U of the European Union against their will with a conservative government with no, with no mandate among us. So the harder that Boris Johnson uh, tries, the people of Scotland there will be a more support to the independence. Now, let's, uh, I would like to suggest an article so you can go a bit further in this topic. And in this case, it's the article and the analysis of Alanet. This is called, Can the Irish Elections Cause the the cracking of the UK. This is written by Isaac Bigio. They're speaking of the inversion of the of the history that may happen in the general elections of Ireland of this Saturday. It says a century ago, um, UK decided to separate the island of Ireland. And now the things are turning back on them.
This time, it could be Ireland who <clears throat> ends up being the one who separates the United Kingdom. For the first time in the history, the Nationalist Government uh, Party was, uh, that was associated to the IRA now lead the, the polls one day before the general elections in the Republic of Ireland. Now let's go to a pause, but in a couple of minutes we're back to know a little bit more about the impact that the decision of abandoning the European Union has had, specifically in, the, in Scotland. There's a huge change uh, since 2014 due to the circumstances, and this is that the opinions of Scotland have, are, are, are huge. We are losing our space in the market. We are losing liberty of mobility. If they ensure a single government, they will have a solid case to celebrate a new a new referendum. It will be hard to see how the United Kingdom government can keep this position for a long time. I am part of the British family. We are a family, uh, Queen Elizabeth, and we were introduced in Europe, and we have not been used since, uh, we have not been well treated from the beginning. Well, uh, since nothing has changed, there has been no, nothing different. Well, there might be uh, some, some hope that the, we might become independent, but we don't know. We're in the hands of the politicians. Now let's check how the situation is in Scotland after the decision of the Brexit. The exiting of the UK from the EU might become on a new order of Scotland. Scotland is uh, Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland, and England. Ever since the beginning of the Brexit, many Scottish have spoken of independence from England. And of course, they could still be part of the European Union. Now, uh, this has been growing stronger for the last weeks. According to some polls, a high, a high number would uh, want to to become independent. Already in 2014, there was uh, a referendum. Back then, the results uh, were negative. The no was 57 percent, and. And uh, these were other times when Brexit wasn't even spoken of. The current Parliament of Scotland has spoken of a new referendum and the results 64 percent in favor and 54 against. With this, the congressmen support the words of the main of the main leader of Scotland that has asked Boris Johnson to hold this referendum in May. So far, uh, Boris Johnson has rejected this proposition. And immediately, let's go to the analysis. And for this, uh, uh, let's go to United States with Emilio Valvo. He's a political analyst. Welcome to Telesur. But also, let's, uh, let's go to Guatemala with Dr. Verganza. He's also a political analyst. Welcome both. Uh, let's begin with uh, Dr. Piano. Uh, tell us, why do you think that there is new talk of independence? Because the uh, referendum of 2014 spoke for itself with 10% of a difference and the no uh, won over the independence. Well, the main reason of the victory of the no was the argument that if we become independent from the United Kingdom, we will lose the affiliation with international organizations 
like the European Union, NATO, the community of nations, but now uh, with the, this is what the United Kingdom did. They they divorced themselves from Brexit, and now so the the um, the argument in favor of no is now is an argument in favor of the yes. In 2020, to say that the argument that justified to 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 reject the independence because they would lose these affiliations, they would have to make. Uh, they would have to make a line to be admitted in the European Union. And now they want to go back to the European Union. They want to be reincorporated as an independent country. So, doctor, can Scotland have a real power to call a new referendum? No. According to the United Kingdom rules, they need the authorization of the parliament of uh, the UK, so they need the power to call on this referendum. So this is what the Prime Minister is asking now, to be able to organize this referendum and leave the, uh, European, the United Kingdom and go back to the European Union. So now there's a new contradiction. Uh, let's go to Dr. Verganza so he can help us sort out what the solution might be. The Prime Minister has already said that his argument is that there was already a referendum back in 2014. But why uh, does Boris Johnson doesn't want a new, a new referendum? Well, I think that the opinion of my of my fellow colleague is enough to understand the spectrum uh, both politically and legally that uh, surrounds the circumstance. I would like to speak a little bit more about what this might mean economically um, on, if this decision goes through, because undoubtedly the United Kingdom under Boris Johnson is trying to recover imperialistic uh, force. There are neoliberal forces that are influenced by the uh, United States, and they're trying to distance themselves from the European Union and try to find their own dynamic and their own benefits that this might, uh, might have as a consequence. However, for the United Kingdom, this uh, this division of Scotland can also be an example that Gibraltar might also take, but also North Ireland can can also be infected by this by this trend and find the independence. All of these have been part of the United Kingdom and now could part can be part of the European Union, precisely because of the. Uh, economic benefits for their populations are better with the European Union than with the United Kingdom. This is what I can share with you in the analysis. I have lost the telephone communication, but I'm, I'm still connected online. So let's go to the United States. Uh, Dr. Biano. We already saw that Scotland wants to avoid the, the experience from Spain with Catalonia, and they want. But what would happen if uh, Boris Johnson definitely says that uh, there's not going to be any new referendum? Well, the rela relation of England as a part of uh, the UK and Scotland was always one of conflict. This began in the Middle Ages in the 12th century until the 17th century to say that the English always tried to conquer Scotland and to eliminate their independence. And, uh, and of course, the, the English uh, lost because the Scottish were very strong. Now, it's clear that they want to separate 
become independent, uh, a reason why the English don't want the separation is because the UK would lose 32% of its territory. It would reduce itself to something very small. But as a population, they would not lose a lot. It would be only 8%. But this but there is another thing that's interesting, is that all of the all of Scotland, the, this the UK would be one of the most densely populated people. However, economically, there there is going to be a loss. For example, other contributions to the economy would be lost. At least 8% of the exports uh, would be lost. 7% of the contribution of Scotland to the services of the UK. And from a positive standpoint, uh, there would be an, an increase in the life expectancy for the people of the UK. Apparently, the Scottish die a bit younger than the English and the people from Wales. So their life expectancy would increase at least a little. These are interesting uh, points. Uh, a little bit, it's it's a bit of a pride not to lose this territory that would make of England and Wales, a very small country. And um, on the other hand, North Ireland uh, would probably find the need to be part of Ireland, and uh, there would be a loss of a certain contribution to the goods and services, uh, to the exportations of the, uh, of the UK. So it will be very hard for the English to accept this due to their pride and that, ha that have gone back to memorial times and that they conquered, they conquered this for centuries ago. Well, all of these risks and threats uh, threat uh, to have a, a, a fracturing in Great Britain. And they're answered by the United Kingdom with a strategy to think of a, of a post-Brexit era and that there is a UK that is united and that would keep the political and economic military traditional influence that the UK has had in the world. How to contrast these two postures, uh, the possibility and how viable it is to have a Scottish independent country, and on the other hand, the interest of, of England to have this uh, strong the strong country. Of course, I think uh, naturally, I think that they uh, think of their empire as if they, if as if they had all of the influence they had way back when, and all of the contribution of their colonies to the richness of uh, of the United Kingdom. This no longer exists. So I think that there will be uh, some type of surprise to those who supported the separation from the European Union. Because, for example, uh, London is one of the cent of financial centers uh, of the world. But now many of the firms in the commercial and financial world has gone to continental Europe to continue their activities within the European Union because this gives them huge advantages. So I think that in a couple of years, uh, the people from the United Kingdom who uh, favored the separation will regret it because they're going to lose a lot in the sense that if uh, we're going to analyze the world and, the, and how everybody supports the conservative party, we see that it's the, the older people who, who gave the conservative party the votes to control the political scene. Uh, of England, and this is why uh, Boris Johnson was elected. The younger uh, group opposes it, opposes the, uh, this uh, more traditional wing, because the fact of isolating themselves and making barriers is uh, totally contrary to the to the times now. Uh, now we need uh, international com commerce, which we had with the European Union. 
doctor, everything appears to point that this instability to, of Scotland could spread to Northern Ireland as well as Gibraltar. What would be behind all this? Uh, do you think that Pandora's box just opened or uh, the authorities who pushed this divorce from the European Union is looking at the consequences? Well, you're probably right because uh, Northern Ireland will try to join up with Ireland that they have huge uh, benefits of being part of the European Union and they have not decided of having a border between Ireland and Northern Ireland. Uh, Gibraltar is another case because they are still considered a colony which is not part of uh, the UK with, uh, with the touch of sovereignty. There, there's only 34,000 inhabitants, although they have their own government, their own prime minister, but in, in, to say the truth, people are there, are, are in favor to maintain themselves in the European Union. In a recent poll in, um, in Gibraltar, 95% of the people decided to maintain themselves in the European Union. The participation was very high. It was almost 85% of the entire population. So there is the role of Spain that, of course, has the power of veto in terms of the European Union and the Gibraltar affair. And there is also a historical dispute between So, this is something peripheric. I think uh, the problem of uh, Scotland is uh, way further, more, more grave. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go try to, to connect ourselves with Guatemala to ask uh, Dr. Vergansa what is his opinion about the, this uh, this position that we will uh, take with uh, England. There is data, historical data that locate this political force uh, for the first time that at one point was the Irish, uh, Irish army. So what could happen after this upcoming Saturday? I think we have no communication with Guatemala, but I think we still have a minute to talk with Dr. Biano from the United States. Uh, no, that's not happening either. So now we will go to a pause, but when we're back, we're analyzing the implications uh, that this divorce of uh, the UK and the European Union specifically in Gibraltar. After formalizing Brexit, what will happen of the territorial dispute between Spain and the UK for the sovereignty of Gibraltar? Let's see. Since 1713, Gibraltar is a territory administered by the UK. In 2016, there was a referendum where 97% of the citizens of Gibraltar opposed the Brexit. They voted uh, to keep on being in the European Union and, ha and having a full member status. Gibraltar is, is one of the open doors to maritime uh, transit. Then the, the UK is no part, is no longer part of the European Union. Fabian Picardo spoke of the of their intention to be part of the Schengen territory. The Gibraltar authorities uh, say that they want a, a flexible border. 
with the European countries. However, Spain has a territorial dispute with the UK over Gibraltar, which they believe is part of their territory. With the new reordering, Brussels have, uh, have supported Spain in the reivindication on Gibraltar. However, this is no longer a bilateral affair between Spain and the UK. Now uh, the European Union is, uh, is in the game and they will decide the fate of the people of Gibraltar. Let's continue our analysis in studio. Now we have Ernesto Bonmaestre. He's a politician and an expert in, in international affairs. Well, thank you for having us. As you can see, we have we there is a an ammunition of the Gibraltar dispute. Spain uh, wants the, the territory back, and there's a lot of in, uncertainty with the people there. Well, I think that behind all this, there is a, there is an interest of the of the news media of the West to try to to try to uh, poke a little bit the socialist governments in Spain. So these are uh, topics like Catalonia and uh, now Gibraltar that uh, bring some tension on Sanchez on one hand. And now, well, Gibraltar is a geopolitical uh, space that has its own importance. And it also has to do with all of the disintegration on the way that the United Kingdom has. Everything that the structural crisis and the disintegration of the old empires, because now we're seeing that there's a destructuralization of the, of the old empire. But of course, uh, the old empires and the new empires are at clash. And here we have the disputes with, uh, with Germany and France, with the UK. And all of, the, all of the analysis you have already done, and including the fourth uh, region, which is Wales, which is also part of the United Kingdom, and it also has their interests and their intentions, which is more uh, inclined to be part of the North because they're closer to them. So this uh, this is a lot has a lot of aspects. Let's go by parts. If we analyze the geopolitical aspects, uh, United Kingdom would do away with that important doorway to Africa of the international commerce. Well, the problem is that United Kingdom is not alone because everything has to do with the U.S. interest. That was one of the groups that pushed for the Brexit. Why? Because there's a tendency of improving the relationship with the United uh, European Union and Russia. And Russia is the main adversary of the United States. On the other hand, China, which we must also bear in mind, because they have a lot of a relationship with the UK. Let's not forget that they, that they uh, inaugurated a, 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 a route from Beijing to London. So this makes it that, uh, that the European Union is separated a little bit by the United States. And I think it's the interest of the United States uh, to get closer to the United Kingdom. And of course, uh, it's in the interest of the UK to have an ally because there's going to be some rejection of Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. If uh, there is th the independence is not accepted, there will be a lot of conflict, and UK needs to have uh, support. And now they need a, a huge uh, influence of the supremacy. And all of this is uh, all together comes all together with this new of uh, this new balance of power, with all of the aspects like the gas and that are have a product of the of the growing crisis that comes from 2008. And everybody says that there's going to be a repetition of that crisis and will be even stronger. This uh, to the inside 
of, uh, of England, there were left-wing uh, parties that have also pushed for the independence. So Brexit is the decision of uh, the United Kingdom is to try to strengthen themselves as opposed to disintegrating the UK. Well, you're speaking of um, what's happening inside, and it's uh, a bit concerning because uh, the workers are also unaware, and there are some companies who started to go to other countries like Malta. Tell us uh, what could happen during this period of uh, transition so the, uh, the exit of the Brexit will be effective. Well, I think that um, regarding, regarding what they have, it's not only the, uh, the geopolitics, but it's also substancy, subsistency. There's also a, there's also some cues that there are there are, there are clues that they might disappear, and this goes on all throughout the world. So they're going to prioritize uh, the survival of this dominating class that might bring many contradictions and protests and conflicts, but. The repression, that's why I said that the repression will increase. For example, what happened in Catalonia, where, where just for asking, for calling on referendum, some people were in jail for 20 years. Well, Scotland wants to go forward with their independence with, uh, with the authorization. Well, Scotland has as much as force as the people of Catalonia who are asking for independence because this bipolar uh, bipolarity is, goes all throughout the countries. And uh, what happens if Boris Johnson doesn't barge and says there will not be referendum? I think that if this happens, they will find alternatives. They will try to push the transition, and if and they will push until there is an acceptance. According to the last polls, it is spoken that the majority of the of the Scottish are in favor of leaving the UK. The thing is that this must be analyzed under under the understanding that the that there's going to be repression and it's going to be very high, a high level repression, and the United States will be uh, supporting them. And of course, what they try to do is to keep uh, maintain a presence a presence there in in Gibraltar. And in the case of Northern Ireland, what would be the expectation? What do you think? Uh, this is uh, where the era, IRA comes from. Yes, there are some declarations of their leader who is uh, in front of all of this. They will keep on insisting and maintaining to become an independent nation. And in that, um, uh, we don't know if they have uh, some ties with uh, Ireland. Well, he, this year is going to be very interesting because there are still, this year uh, is pending for the implementation of all of the exit, all of the exit strategies from the Brexit. For example, in the universities, the program uh, ha is very worried because, uh, for example, the investigators, the professors will not have the same prerogatives as they had with the European Union. And this problem of the rights will be a friction because now, uh, because before, uh, with all the giving and taking, 
mucho con la cuestión humanística, Francia, con la cuestión, y van a And now, eso, no van a cumplir. It's not possible to do away with all their demands. It's even said that they might privatize Social Security in the UK. This will bring a lot of problems because um, the Caribbean have also said that they want uh, their retirement. And now the the time doesn't uh, doesn't add up, and all of this will come together in the Brexit problem. Okay, now in the midst of this panorama, do you think that there might be a fracture of the European of the of the UK? Do you think this is too fast to say this, or is this uh, is this accurate? Well. I think that uh, there are conditions that would have to be fulfilled, like, for example, if Boris Johnson loses the elections and the upcoming uh, prime minister will not accept will not accept the conditions, and, and the next president might even say, let's go back to the European Union. I think that this um, governing class of the UK tried to try to solve their internal problems by uh, this exit from the Brexit. Because by not being in the European Union, uh, they could favor this portion uh, that, uh, that wants to stay in the UK. In this case, it's uh, Northern Ireland, Ireland, Scotland, and England. You have spoken of some uh, concerns, for example, the ones in the Caribbean. Uh, what are the things that are going on? Well, here we have a new phenomenon, which is those Caribbean countries, which are more tied to Colombia and Venezuela through the Petrocaribe projects and the ALBA, and the, and the United States wants to eliminate that. Up until now, uh, they've been careful because that is part of the strategy. Trump always speaks of Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela in his, uh, in his speech. Uh, he doesn't even mention the Caribbeans because there are interests of the, of the UK. So, of course, this might erode the relations between the Caribbeans that are part of the Commonwealth and that they have their own concerns. And this process of CARICOM could have some influence on the integration that it goes in the benefit of the United States because it's in their interest to disintegrate the projects that they are have ongoing right now. Uh, confronted with all of these challenges, what does the divorce of the UK from the U European Union, what does it mean? Because uh, uh, let's not lose uh, the sight that Boris Johnson speaks of a uh, United Kingdom that will maintain their influence in the world. Well, this is the pretension that this group is seeking. Well, there has been many variables. You cannot see if there's going to be an earthquake or what they're going to do is they're going to, they're going to rely a lot on uh, their, their current allies. The United States is interested in keeping the European allies as um, to confront the Chinese advance that they have. We must recall that when the social democracy government said, proposed this uh, Barcelona project, and they were going to do it in the Mediterranean, this, uh, this project that goes back to the time of Felipe González, this project was, was going to leave the United States beyond the control of the Mediterranean, and that is always there. 
It's like a sword to their neck because uh, France is still interested in that project. So with some money to join together, uh, this is very interesting. This is a very interesting initiative. And what the United States wants to do is to keep on uh, uh, sacking and sacking. And of course, it is in the interest of the United States that there is no unity. According to your appreciation, you cannot speak, uh, we cannot speak of a fracture in the UK. However, there is the beginning. There is a, there are small evidence that the uh, United Kingdom is a polarized nation. And today, this, uh, this is positive, uh, this is proved in the UK. As you said, there is a polarization in everything that has to do with the, with the UK and the countries who are part of it. And the positions in terms of the, of the rest of the world has also been affected. I think all of these are tools that the United States has tried to have. That's why uh, some say that the coronavirus has to do with that strategy of having China uh, a little bit paralyzed. But now with this uh, epidemic, especially because of the repercussion that they have received. So there are trains that bring concerns and governments who want to hold them within. This has to do with the impeachment that have, uh, that finally was, a, and Trump was finally acquitted. Well, uh, and he's, a, he's an assassin. He tries to, to kill the pe oh, some people uh, around the world. So according to you, Everything, everything that's going on is interconnected. Of course, it has the structural crisis of the capitalism and the disappearing of the great capitalist uh, powers. Do you think that those empires can disappear? Yes, I think that the tendency goes there and that from one minute to another, the, uh, these empires will disappear. If you analyze history, that when this Ultrich Agreement happened, uh, everything that happened with the infamous agreement with the Pope and the Kings, that was years ago. These were decades ago with that all of the centuries that had to pass for there to be real changes. So I think that we are going to live very interesting upcoming years. Thank you very much, Professor, for your time and your reflections for Telesur. Let's go to conclusions. After more than two years of internal convulsion, the decision of separating from the European Union leaves several questions on how to implement all of the all of the influence of diplomatic, cultural, commercial, financial influence that they've had. Up until now, uh, it's clear that we have begun the post-Brexit uh, era with uh, several with several problems among the former UK territories that want their own sovereignty. Up until now, this is our analysis. Thank you very much.